the word of God for the people of God. Today I'd like to use as a question, as a beginning to our spiritual reflection time, where is God sending us? Where might God be sending us? Where is God sending you? Last week I was coming home a different way. I was over on Halstead trying to make my way back to Hyde Park. I passed by the 9th District Police Station on 3120 South Halstead. I knew that immigrants were being dropped off in progressive cities such as Chicago. I knew that there were facilities being converted to house new immigrants coming in. I know that many are torn for the services they feel like our own citizens are not getting. And now we have more people on our doorsteps. I know that hospitality is not often at the front of our mind when we think of immigrants in our city, nor the conditions that have created a continual influx of immigrants. But all of that said, nothing prepared me for what I saw on Halstead. I saw at least five mattresses just thrown on the ground. I saw people's personal belongings. I saw trash. I saw make-do chairs. I saw little kids running around. I saw people sitting on the ground. I saw grime on people's skin. I saw tiredness etched in grown adult faces. I saw a homeless group blocking much of the police district with nowhere to go. Absolutely nowhere to go. I saw a hot mess. I saw humans far away from their homes living in squalor. Where is God sending them? Where might God be sending us? The Calderon family, husband and wife, left their home with their three kids a few years ago. The process was grueling, but they knew that they couldn't go back to Guatemala. You see, they had a Jew stall, and one day a gang came and threatened them that if they didn't pay five months worth of wages, that they would kill them. The Calderon family believed them because they had seen other families and they had seen other kids killed. There was no one there that could protect them. And so after that threat, they hid in their home for days. And one day before dawn, they took them and their three kids and they left. They snuck out. They left seeking security for their kids. Where might God be sending them? Where is God sending us? Barclay had worked a very long day at his job, and at the end of his work shift, he wanted to go home. But there was traffic everywhere, construction everywhere, and it seemed like he would never get home. He's decided, you know, have you ever been stuck in traffic and you try to take another way and the situation just seems worse and worse and you can't seem to get away from all the traffic? <laughs> on this route he saw a grocery store and he felt compelled to stop and go in there in the grocery store Barclay bumped into his past partner his first love he hadn't seen him in over 10 years he had wondered about his first love things did not end on a perfect note or a great note there was much that had been left unsaid and the things that were said were hurtful they talked and they talked. They were two different people. They had grown over 10 years. They had both matured, and they were able in the store to say what they had not been able to say then and there in the heat of the breakup. They hugged, and they said goodbye once again. Gar Barclay had been seeking closure for years, wondering what had happened to his first love. When he got to the car, he began to weep. Here he had been wanting to see him for years, and because of traffic everywhere, he had ended up in a store that he didn't rarely go in. In his car, he realized that the heat and the traffic and all of the angst of that day 
had put him right where he needed to be. Without it, he would not have seen his friend. Where is God sending us? Where is God sending you? A pastor gets a call to meet with a church member. He tells his administrator he will be gone for the day. Do what you got to do in the office. He rushes out not realizing he left his cell phone. Now, you guys know what you do when you leave your cell phone. You got to go back and get that cell phone, amen? Because you can't live without your cell phone. So he's blocks away. He circles back. He goes back to the office to get his phone. The administrator is not expecting him because he's supposed to be gone for the day. He walks in and he discovers his administrator crying out loud. She's crying so hard she does not hear him when he enters. He's there for his cell phone, but I guess he cannot ignore her cries. He goes to her and holds her. She is shocked. What is he doing here? She had allowed herself to let go because she knew she would be alone. She has been battling depression and her life doesn't feel well, worthwhile. Now, with all of her defenses down, she allows herself to be vulnerable with the pastor. He realizes in that moment that it's not a scripture that he needs to give her. It's not another prayer he needs to speak. It's as if his whole life has been waiting for this moment. He feels as if God is nudging him to share his testimony. And so he shares with her his own battle with depression. He talks about the years of being in the dark. And he shares with her how therapy and medicine and doing the work put him in a better place. They look at each other because though they've worked with each other for a while, they've never seen each other, not in that light. And just like that, something changes between them. Where was God sending that pastor on that day? Where is God sending us? Where might God be sending you? Today, we will baptize and welcome in Danielle Love. I've often wondered about her last name, but she shared it with me and So should all of our last names be love. Last year, she came to us in pain. That first day with us, we were in a space. Of all the churches that Danielle could have ended up in, she ended up here. And we listened as best we could. Sometimes we think we're listening with our ears. Most of the time, God's calling us to listen with our heart and our spirit. And today she is celebrating sobriety and leaning into recovery and embracing the best life ahead of her. I believe, maybe she believes, that God sent her here. I wonder if some of you also, maybe years ago, maybe not so far ago, were sent here as well. I've heard a search and a yearning and even some finding us while not even looking for us. They were actually looking for another church and ended up here. And I wondered, even in that angst, did God, was God in the mix? Was God sending you here? Pentecost suggests God can send us anywhere, anytime, if we remain open to the Spirit. Last Sunday, a dear brother from another country visited us, but it wasn't his first time here. He had been here over a year ago when his wife was in the University of Chicago Hospital. His wife died. It was a hard road getting her body, getting it prepared to send it globally back home. They had brought her here for better medical care. It had not ended well. I still could see some of the sadness on him because loss is loss after all. But last week he was back to see his daughter graduate from the University of Chicago. And he came here to this church, United Church of Hyde Park, where he had sat when he left the hospital with his wife in critical condition. I believe God sent him to us a little bit of space among so much grief to affirm that he was still loved by God. Maybe some comfort for his journey. But I believe that God is not only sending people here, God is sending us out to others because some will never come to this church. Some will never cross these doors. God is sending us to them. The passage today is the story of Abram and Sarah's call. 
God sent them to, and it, in sending, asked them, God asked them to lose a part of themselves. God says, go from your country, your family, and your house to the country that I will show you. Their homeland, their clan, their people, their culture, everything. Lose your safety net. Lose your family support system. Lose your friends. Lose your proximity to safety. They were being asked to leave the comfort of what they knew to embrace. The unfamiliar. And in losing all of that, God says, hold on to me. God was asking something of Abram and Sarah. And maybe God is asking something of us. People are always being sent. Sometimes it can feel like an intrusion. God, I ain't got nothing for you today. Sometimes we aren't all that interested in where God may want to send us. Sometimes we aren't all that interested in God putting us to work. I got enough to do. And we definitely are not interested in being inconvenienced. We like a life of convenience. Baby, bye. Sometimes we ask, is this even God? Sometimes we aren't all that sure we have what it takes to be sent anywhere anyway. Sometimes the enormity of the task makes us not want to go. Sometimes we think we've had enough on our plate. Sometimes we are sent and we are too scared to go. Sometimes God is sending us towards our own healing. Trust me, child. Sometimes we're being sent to be a blessing to another, but we have to be willing to leave the familiar to get to where God wants us to be. Sometimes it is our own story and our journey God is sending us to lay at the feet of another human being. Sometimes it doesn't add up or make sense, and we look up one day and discover God was in the mix and God was sending us all along, that our steps were ordered and our chapters written. Thanks for sending our ancestors, Lord. Thanks for sending Abraham and Sarah. Thanks on this week where we celebrate Juneteenth for sending people who stood up against evil. Thanks for sending those to let the others that didn't know they were free, that they were free. And thank you, Lord, for sending us. The Pentecost spirit is still in our midst, and it will help us. Where is God sending you? Where is God sending us? Amen.